Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Math Rebbe. I'm your host, Anil. Over the next two episodes, we'll be talking about how Rashi disagrees with the Pythagorean theorem and how to resolve those contradictions. We'll also be talking about how everyone else deals with the sugya. For the record, triangle problems are much harder to deal with than ordinary problems. In argument, there's only two sides to deal with. With triangles, you have three sides to reconcile. <laughs> See that you have two vegetable patches planted as shown, where the tan one is one type of vegetable and the green is another. There is no issue of climb whatsoever if you plant them like this. No problem, right? Well, the fields are each six by six. Each plant nourishes from the surrounding tefach and a half. Thus, there's three tefachim between the center seed and the surrounding seeds. There's one tefach in the gap between fields. This is not an issue of the horizontal row being so close to the vertical row, though, because two rows being perpendicular to one another is separation as long as they're not touching. But what about the two vertical rows? The horizontal distance is still one tefach, and the vertical distance, says Rashi, is two tefachim. That leaves a hypotenuse of, drumroll please, three. Um, excuse me? Hypotenuse of a 1 by 2 triangle is root 5, about 2 and a quarter. Even if we round it, that would be nowhere close. What in the world was Rashi thinking? If you thought that was bad enough, just wait. You ain't seen nothing yet. The Gemara in Ervin, in discussing the minimum depth of a Mavoy, gives two opinions. Abai's number of 4 Amos and Rav Yosef's number of 4 Tzfachim. Abai challenged Rav Yosef from a Brisa that requires plural houses and plural courtyards to be on a mavoi. Since the minimum entrance to a courtyard is four tefachim, how can you have two courtyards on a mavoi? You can't have them touching, though, because then where would you put the door frames? So Rav Yosef answered that you have them on a slant, like so. Or at least that's how Rashi explains Rav Yosef's statement of Karen Zavis. There's three tefachim vertically, and one tefach horizontally, thus four tefachim. And he's still adding, not using the Pythagorean theorem. Strike three. There's a Gemara in Sukkah, which we'll talk about more later, that talks about the round Sukkah. Rav Yochanan holds it has to have 24 people in its circumference. In conclusion, he meant 24 people outside, eight or 18 amos, and he was rounding up from 16.8. The Gemara follows up with the Dayanin de Kesari, the Caesarian judges, who say that a square inside a circle takes up half of it. The Gemara calls them out on it as it's quote-unquote obvious to all that this is false. We'll see just how true that is later on, but for now we're focusing on Rashi, who for some odd reason completely ignores this piece of the Suga. Now, a lack of proof for is not a proof against, but it seems odd that Rashi wouldn't say anything. Does this mean that Rashi agrees with them? The Gemara in Ervin asked a similar question regarding putting a round window in a wall to be able to pass between the two adjoining courtyards on Shabbos. Rav Yochan requires not 24 people, but 24 tefachim around the circumference, the palm two and a bit of which must be within 10 tefachim of the ground, such that a square inside would be within 10 tefachim of the ground. Rashi interprets this to mean the lower two tefachim of the circumference, but Tosus point out that since a 24 tefach circumference contains four six tefach segments when split by the square, there would have to be at least six tefachim of the circumference to include part of the square. Instead, they say it refers to two tefachim in height. If the square is centered on the eight tefach diameter circle, then two tefachim will be outside the square on either end and four inside the square. Thus, two tefachim will put the square under 10. Just a minor point. Here's the main reason I'm bringing up this sugya. Since Rabbi Yochanan used tefachim this time, not people, he has less leeway to get that to mean 16.8. It's just too far off. The Gemara has no choice but to say that Rabbi Yochanan holds of the Dayani de Kisari, and Rashi still ignores that, the sugya. Once is chance, twice is a pattern. Why is Rashi seemingly not bothered by this blatant mess of numbers that even the Gemara says is wrong? 
Now, you might ask, what is there for Rashi to say that the Gemara hasn't? Well, you could say what, for instance, Tos was say, to try to find a way to defend the Dayanim. What specifically Tos was say will be covered in the next video. If you didn't have enough with creative ways to be my eye of courtyards, try ladders. If the angle is right, putting ladders on either side of the 10 tefach wall will be enough to be my eye of the courtyards. But how tall do the ladders have to be? Shmuel says 14 tefachim, Rav Yosef says 13, Abai says 11, and Rav Huna says 7. For all except Rav Huna, who allows a vertical ladder, Rashi says that they can be exactly 4 tefachim from the wall. So this is to point out the obvious problem. They can be much farther than that. They hold that the ladder can be as far away from the wall as it is up the wall. Thus Shmuel, who requires it to reach the top, allows it to be 10 tefachim away and 4 tefachim long. Rav Yosef and Abai, whose ladders can be only 9.37 and 8.48 tefachim respectively, wouldn't fit this rubric. But Tosu's hand waved that, saying that they are just giving a simon, just as distance up and away from the wall is 1 and 3 tefachim less respectively than Shmuel's ladder, so too they express the length of the ladder as those differences, even though it's not ex uh, accurate. But it's still a problem for Rashi. What was he thinking? The last sugya is toward the end of Ervin, regarding a Rishos Hayachad whose wall developed a 10 alma gap next to a Rishos Harabim. One may carry inside for the remainder of that Shabbos, but not the following Shabbosos before it's fixed. There's a rule called P. Tikra, which allows an overhang to act as a solid wall. Why can't we apply such a rule here? Rav says it's because the roof is slanted, and Shmuel says it's on the corner set back for Tfachim. Rashi explains Shmuel as saying that the breach was 5 by f Amos by 5 Amos for a total of 10. But how can it be 10 Amos? It's only 7. Major cliffhanger. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next episodes with all the answers you've been seeking.